Hello beautiful starseed and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jai Gobind and this is your channel for grace. Let us hop right into your astrology and tarot reading for Virgo season of summer 2020. <laughs> All right, Leo, let's take a look at the transits and major aspects that are going on this Virgo season for you. If you're a Leo rising, this will be the most accurate reading in terms of the astrology, but also listen to it for signs and messages, channeled messages for Sun, Moon, Venus um, as well. And then the tarot reading is uh, for sure Sun, Moon, Venus and rising for everyone in all signs. So make sure that you check those out and the other videos also that have been posted so you get the full picture of how these energies for Virgo season are going to be affecting you. <clears throat> the first thing that happens is the sun moves into Virgo and this is going to be happening in your second house. So for you this month is about abundance, money, finances, grounding yourself, finding a deeper sense of value for yourself, for your for um, your ability to, to manifest things in your life. This is also um, <clears throat> finding more self-worth. So it's a month where you, you, you get to practice um, raising and uh, your self-esteem and, and, and really stepping into self-worth. So really powerful month for you. The sun squares the nodes on August um, 28th and the nodes for you are north node in the 11th, south node in the 5th and this duality is actually challenging you to, it's asking you like, are you focusing, because the north node in the 11th is about focusing on friends, acquaintances, networks of people, sharing yourself, your gifts with the world, focusing on helping others. This is like a humanitarian energy. So with the sun challenging the nodal axis, it's saying, are you walking in the right path? This is maybe something that's definitely outside of your comfort zone, especially if you're Leo rising, because the north node in the 11th is basically in the opposite house that you rule. You rule the fifth house. So this is outside of your comfort zone. So it's definitely challenging you to step outside, but at the same time, teaching you so much about how once you know yourself, and you have that sense of self and value and worth, then you can step out into the world and share your gifts. So really powerful transit there. Mercury will enter the sign of Libra on August 29th, which means he is entering your third house, which is the house of communication. So he naturally rules this house. He feels at home here. He brings more balance and harmony in terms of communication when he's in Libra, but when he's in the third house, he actually helps you to communicate more clearly and to speak your truth. So that's going to be a beautiful transit for you. We will also see Mars oppose Neptune at 22 degrees on September 2nd, and Mars at that point will be in your second house, and Neptune is in your eighth. So what's what, what happens here is there's a moment that feels... Um, like a fog, like a lack of clarity. So this is not a time to take action. You will feel like you're not sure where to put your action, where to put your focus, where to put your drive and your motivation. But at the same time, it's really important for you to wait till the fog clears to make decisions as to how to continue to take action in your life. And then we land on the new moon in um, Virgo on the 6th, which is going to be happening in your um, second house. Now this is the house of, again, like I mentioned, um, self-esteem and values, also money. So this is a really good time to set intentions about what, how do you want to manifest in your life? What do you want to bring in? How do you want to bring more abundance into your life? What are the steps that you're going to take to bring that abundance into your life as well? This is a massive portal for you to make your new moon wishes as to everything that you want. And this has to do with things that give you comfort and security and safety. And then Venus moves into Scorpio on September 10th, which means she enters your fourth house of the home. So this brings harmony into the household, um, better relationships into the home. Although with the fourth house in Scorpio, what you are actually you might be experiencing is an intensity. So relationships at home become more passionate, more, um, more, uh, 
creative as well, but more intense in the sense of like more deep. So more um, powerful, deep connections that lead to maybe strong bonds um, that you make with family members, maybe new family members or reawakened energy within families, um, relationships. We will then see Mars enter Libra. And then the sun make the same opposition to Neptune that Mars did like a few days before. So with Mars in Libra, that means that he's leaving your second house and entering your third. So the now your drive and your focus um, is about communicating clearly. And with the second kind of opposition, opposition energy between the sun and Neptune, it's another moment where just wait it off. Don't make decisions. Don't make hasty decisions. Wait till the fog clears. The sun does make a trine to Pluto on September 17th and Pluto's in your sixth. So this is about a deeper understanding of everything that's unfolding this month for us, but not just this month for us individually, but also as a collective understanding at a deeper level why it seems that your daily life just seems to keep kind of crumbling and you have to kind of pick up the pieces, start over again. Like why, why have you had to start over in terms of your daily life, your schedule, what you do on a daily basis? These are the things that have been really changing. Um, and so you're finding your way around these um, deep sort of tower moments that are happening for you in your daily life. And then we end the month with the full moon in Pisces, which will be happening in your eighth house, which is the house of death and change and transformation. So it's also the house of resources. So if you prayed for something <laughs> to come into your life, resources, investments, then on this full moon, you'll see whether these are starting to come true or not, or if you, you know, if, if what's going on in that area of your life. Now, this could also be that this month kind of culminates for you in a powerful release moment. It culminates for you in a moment of letting go, um, a, 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 a death ritual, a shamanic death ritual, something, an ending that is about to lead towards a powerful new beginning. So that is the astrology for you. Uh, let's hop on over to the cards and add to this message and also see what your spirit guides, angels, and teachers want to tell you about this month of um, Virgo season in your chart. All right, Leo, last but not least, I'm so excited to finally get to your tarot reading here. I'm going to tell you what these five cards represent. But before we do that, let me invite you to check out my Andromeda Starseed Oil Blend, which I am featuring this month. We've got the Aura Mist as well as the Essential Oil Roller, both of them amazing to connect to your Starseed family if you are an Andromedan or also to um, activate the energies of liberation, surrender, non-attachment, beauty and truth and following the light. And this essential oil blend is made with Melissa, eucalyptus and Hawaiian sandalwood essential oils, elderberry extract, coconut oil and mica powder. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at five cards, each one representing a specific thing. The first one is your intuition. The second one is the challenge. The third one is the overall theme. Fourth is wisdom from your starseed ancestors. And the fifth is the animal spirit that is showing up for you this month to bring you some guidance. Now, the very first card that you get is the two of swords. So what's happening this month is you, you're at a crossroads and it's time to make a decision. So it's just super clear message that you're starting with there. What's the challenge? The challenge is the hanged man and the hanged man is about waiting. It's not time to make the decision yet. Either, it, either it's not time or it, you're, you're being challenged because you're, you're not making a decision. So something is slowing you down and it's becoming super, super frustrating. I think that because the overall theme is the Knight of Pentacles, which is a dependable energy, a conservative energy, a myth methodological energy, it's slow moving because it takes time to achieve these kind of goals that we would call the pentacles gold, which is money, abundance, manifestation. It takes time 
to achieve, you know, the 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 rewards to get the rewards of of, of hard work, which I feel like the Pentacles card are, are about hard work. They are about dedication to a path. They are about connecting to the earth too. And this being the night is also um, a masculine energy that that arrives, but it brings more groundedness. So that's the overall theme for you is that you're actually pretty grounded, um, but you're having you're having trouble just making up your mind about this issue that has come up for you. So you can either take the hanged men as you know your challenge is to not to not just like make the decision uh, like out of like Im impulse to actually wait and think about it because that's that's the message that's coming through with the hanged man and the knight of pentacles it's like just just hang in there you you're at a crossroads you need to make a choice but but it's not really you you can't this isn't the kind of choice that you can make um from one day to the next this is something that will sort of the answer will come to you little by little um as the month progresses the stance your starseed ancestors um want you to know child of the cosmos the intelligence of the universe lives within you lies within you you are a child of the cosmos they want you to remember that like everything to me what this card says is that everything is perfect just the way it is you don't need to change anything and because you are a child of the cosmos the answer to what you're looking for will arrive when it needs to it's like spiritual timing perfect timing you don't need to worry about that the answer will arrive and this is also why the crocodile is here because the crocodile is about resting submerging collecting your energy and cooling off the crocodile reminds us to step back from the external world and turn inward the same message as the hanged man now is not the time for decisions wow action or discussion the crocodile's mantra is wait this doesn't mean lying around hoping life's challenges will disappear the crocodile is much smarter than that. It means intentionally withdrawing, gathering our awareness, observing and building energy. Fill up the vital reserves so your next move comes from a place of wisdom and power. Whoa, that is powerful. So if you're in balance this month, you're going to feel like you're in your wise essence. You'll be patient. You'll be a silent powerhouse when out of balance you might feel stuck you might lash out at people so to bring to balance give yourself rest um, meditations anything that can calm your energy and ground you down thank you so much good luck this month and i will see you again next time